All right, so this last video is going to be just unlocking the next level of your Airtable database. And I'm going to be showing you up here at the top, you might have been wondering what height fields does, what filter does, group, sort, color, row height, share view, as well as this grid view over here. Like what does grid view mean? And if I click on this, if you've seen any of these, what do all these creative view means? Grid, form, calendar, gallery, Kanban and these suggested ones, like what does all that mean? I know it's a lot, especially as you're getting started and this video is going to serve to show you at the table level, what are some different views where like maybe in Excel, you might've thought of tabs or, it's really just going to unlock that next level of your table database. So what I want to show you now is our first tutorial and that's going to be on views. And it's just going to be very simple. So you might think of this client list as our CRM. You might think of this whole thing from prospecting a client to client fulfillment. This is the whole customer journey flows through the space and it's not built out whatsoever, but we have like the bare bones that we need specifically just for this client list. So in here we have a table with all of our data. And I added some data since the last video just to give us some more capabilities for filtering and some more capabilities for different views. And so I added a created time, which I can't change. It's just the time that the record was created. So you can see a few different times. And actually for the sake of this video, I'll change this from created time just to a regular date field. That way we can add some different dates. That way it's not all the same in here. So we'll add a few different dates and this is just gonna give you a little bit more visual effect when we go to add like a calendar view, for example, and sort. So for views, right now we have all of our clients no matter what the stage is. So the most common for a sales team is to group by client status. And you might see like group by up there, but it's actually giving yourself a Kanban view and cards. That way you can just drag and drop here and drag and drop there. And that's exactly what this is. So right now we have two in each stage and say I have John Doe as a client right now and I actually just fulfilled all everything that I needed to for him. And right here I can just drag him right there and now he's done, he's moved to that next stage. And if we come back here to the grid view, we can, see, we can see that there's now three people in done rather than just two. There's only one in hired rather than two. So that's amazing. And one thing, one common misconception is with Airtable and the views is that you need to be creating different tables when you actually need to be creating different views. And the biggest thing that you can benefit from this creating these different views is filtering. So say you wanna create a table where all you see are your current clients, or actually for this example, we'll say all of our past clients. So what you would wanna do is you wanna create another grid view. You wouldn't wanna create like another client list up here, add a whole new table. All you need to do is create another view. When you create these different views over here, so as you can see, we have two right here. It's not ever going to delete the data or it backtrack. If you delete the table in one view, it's going to delete it in, in a different one. If you edit in one view, it's going to edit the other views, the data itself. If you edit how you see the video, so with these things up here, it's not going to edit any of the data in the view. So you can come in here and filter out data that you don't want to be seeing if you just want to be seeing your past clients. So I'll show you that right now. So we'll create a view. We're going to use a grid view and we're gonna say past clients. So it's always good to name your views, that way you know exactly what it is. And we're just gonna shrink that up a little bit. And so how do we tell what our past clients are? Well, we tell what the client status being done. So if I come up here and add a filter, I can add a filter where the client status is done. And this is super easy, just drag and drop. It's not like, you don't have to like come in here and code or run a query or anything like that. It's very simple to use and that's I think why so many people love using Airtable. So there's our past clients. Maybe you also wanna see anybody 
that was created after a certain day. So like anybody who came in after the 5th of January or something, or yeah, maybe the 5th of January. So future. So we'll filter this and we'll add a filter where the created is, and this is where it gets tricky with the filters because you can come in here and pick a field and depending on it recognizing that it's a date field, you can choose some different like is or anything like that. So we'll say is after today. And so this will be dynamic to always only show records where they're created or maybe in this one we have like a consultation. We have a consultation call with them after this specific date. So that's great. And now we have two different views so we can see past clients, we can see clients, obviously their client status wouldn't be done in the future, like with their call already being in the future, but you get the point, you can filter based on different date, based on different data. And if we come back to this, this grid view, we can see all of that data is unchanged in here. So that is the basic to add, just adding different views and filtering. And this, uh, these filters are really useful for Zapier integrations because Zapier's really, their best trigger is going to allow you to trigger not based on when a record matches conditions, but when a record enters a view. And so you might wanna like come in here and create locked views for Zapier integrations. When a record comes in here, it has to meet these criteria that you set in the filter. And the sorting doesn't matter, the grouping doesn't matter, but the filters do for like a Zapier integrated view. So that's super useful. Another Another view that would be very useful in this example is when those consultations, consultation calls are. So if I come in here and add this calendar view, then I can just leave it named calendar and we'll, it'll allow you to pick like which field you want to have in here. So for us, we'll just do consultation call and you can see the different records in here and you can actually expand these records and see them that way. Now, at the very beginning of this series, I mentioned that you could have some different sharing capabilities, not just at the workspace in the base level, but now down here at like the table in the view level. And you totally can, and that is going to come in right here. So you can share this view. Don't click up here. If you share using this button up here, then what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be sharing the whole base. But if you click this share view right here, you can create a shareable calendar view link. And if you wanna to try to go use this link, you're not gonna be able to because it's my link, but you can copy the link on yours and you can use that and you can set some like parameters around the default calendar in this example, or you can make it editable or you can't make it editable in a shared view link. They have to have, have an account to be able to edit it. So keep that in mind when you're trying to share, especially out of a paid plan, their tables kind of sticklers about that, but people can copy data out of the view and you can, manipulate what fields are shown in like a shared calendar view. And you do that by using some more of this stuff up here in normal views, but like hide fields. So if I want to share this view, but I don't want to share all of the video assets, I don't want to share their wish list, or really mostly any of this stuff, what I want to do is I can click share view, but before I go do that, I want to come in here and hide some fields. And so if I hide, if I just start hiding away at nearly all of these, then I only say I only want like the first three just to make it easier for this video. And yours is gonna be very specific for yours, but now I can come up here and I can click share view and I can share this grid view and I can allow people to, like if people, if I want people to be able to see all of those 10 hidden fields, I can toggle this on and yeah, it'll warn you because you can really condense the data that people see, like if it's a shared view using this stuff. So you, you can share at the view level. And if you don't have any views, you can just share your master view. If you don't have any filters or anything on it, it's just gonna show everything. So in general, that's how you use the filters. You can use filters on anything from numbers to dates to making it only those single select fields can use the same thing for multi-select fields. And one of my favorites is like, say we only want to keep track of those, the last name Doe for whatever, for whatever example, 
So we'll say this is called dough. And we can add a filter in here that searches when name contains dough. So this will only show us John and Jane Doe, and that's that's pretty cool. So that's just another filter. I would play around with these filters. You can try it out on any of your field types. I don't know for like button, how it works for button, but I haven't ever run into any problems with showing a very specific set of data that is very specific to whatever use case or whoever I'm trying to send it to by drilling down on these filters. You can add quite a few of them now used to not be able to add this many, but you can add many filters to make it as specific as you want. So similar to the Kanban view where you have stuff in cards and you can see it separated by a single select field. One of these that I like, one of these things up here is called grouping. And grouping, if you think about the Kanban view as like a vertical group, it's grouped by the client status. You can group it horizontally with this grouping function. So if I add a group and I make it client status, it kind of groups it horizontally. And I know most sales teams like to use that Kanban view, but I also like this to view more data and view more of the fields that are associated with each record rather than that vertical view. So you can also group it by say, you have the date in here. So consultation, so if any, so say I'll just change this one for the sake of this, you can see two people are on the same day and everybody else has their very own day. So that's how the grouping works. It's very useful if you have, especially, especially I think for statuses like this or really any single, single select. Now the, like the last few things I'm going to be showing you here are sort color and row height is super easy. If you just come up here and select this, like you can expand this or shorten it from one line, two lines, three lines, etc. But for sort, this is also super useful if you wanna see like when's my next meeting or you can combine a sort with a filter to show your next meeting. So I'll do that right now actually. So if I come in here into the future, you can see I might think, oh, maybe John's my next client, but actually the consultation call is on the 9th and I have one before on the 7th. So if I come in here and I do this and I make the consultation call and then sort it how I want it, then I can see, okay, Jane is on the 7th and John's not till the 9th. And if you go out of your air table and then come back into your air table, it's going to be the same thing. So whatever you leave these as, and you can have as many of these as you want. So say I add another group in here as client status, you can add one of everything or sometimes like if you want multiple of everything in here, you can, the more data you get, it's going to be more useful. Now, one thing that I wish Airtable had more of was conditional formatting and conditional formatting was great in Excel, but it's just not quite there in Airtable. It's there. I'll show you the extent of conditional formatting that you can do. So if I come back out to this grid view, be easiest to see in here. Okay. So you actually have to have a pro plan. So, for this, it's basically going to be very similar to a filter where you can add, if this is pre-consult, then you can make, you can add like a single little red line over here. That's about the size of those 10 little dots right there. And it'll add that conditional formatting that way. You can also make it match the color of a single select. So I don't know how useful that is. It's not nearly as useful as like highlighting a whole cell right here, but it's more than nothing for conditional formatting. So I hope that gives you a good idea of all the different views you can have. Before we move on, I will show you the last few different types of views and show you how you can create those because we've gone through height fields, filters, groups, sorts, and colors, and row heights. So, so far we've done the grid view, we've done a calendar view, we've done a Kanban view. And so that leaves gallery and form. So for gallery, what gallery really works well for is back here. If we go to, I believe it is the social media content calendar. If we are in here and we go to this post gallery, this is what this works very well for So when you have a picture and then you have certain data, you can actually customize these. So maybe I don't want nearly all of this on here. You can customize these cards and it's going to show in a gallery card like view. It's not, not going to be squoze together like the Kanban view, 
but it's still going to show you all the information and it look it just looks very well with the attachment pictures so that's the first way to do it now these are very popular if you want to say include these on your website you can embed this view onto your website and have like a really nice looking gallery view of whatever it is that you want to offer so maybe it's all your services maybe it's times to talk to you whatever that is this is a very popular view to embed on a website or get out of Airtable. Now that leaves forms and to go through forms, I'm actually going to send you to the next video and it is going to be a tutorial on how to build out your Airtable forms.